Okay, so this is Busy Beaver decorating the Christmas tree, take two. It's the first one. I forgot to turn the sound on. So I did things a little bit different this time. Instead of having me down there, I've got my palette so you can see when I'm mixing colors and when I do on the palette when I'm doing these pictures for you to follow along with me. So first thing we're going to do for Busy Beaver is we're going to do his background, his sky. So that's going to be mainly white. So I'm adding some white to my palette. There's some white there which is a little bit of blue. So I've got my blue and I'm adding that. Just a little bit of the blue next to my white on my palette. I'm going to use my biggest paintbrush I have, which is this one here. That brush there. I'm going to wet it, take off the extra water, give it a little bit of a clean again. There's the extra water on the paper towel, taking that off. And I'm going to take a bit of my blue Mix it in with the white to get a baby blue. So I'm mixing a little bit, you can see in the smaller picture there, of the blue with the white and get a baby blue. So there's a little bit of the light blue. So I have some light blue, some dark blue, and some white on my palette now. So I'm gonna start with the sky. So I've got my paintbrush with the baby blue on it. And I'm going to just dab in different directions and let baby blue on. I'm gonna do it about three quarters of the way down the canvas here, because then this will be the snow down there. And when you're doing your canvas and painting it, if you want to, you can also paint up on top and out here too. So when it's all done, you want to hang it up somewhere. You know, the edges are paint as well. So I'm taking my dirty paint brush and I'm putting it back in to the white this time. A little bit of white up in here, mixing in with the baby blue because it's uh, still wet on the canvas. And now I'm going to go back into baby blue. So I'm just going back and forth, sometimes baby blue, sometimes white. And I'll mix it canvas, some swirlies to get the feeling of the sky. I can even take some dark blue if I want. And if I, if I go on the canvas and think, oh, that's too dark, I just put some white paint on my brush and go on top and I just mix it right on the canvas to get the colors that I want. So I did this through the top two thirds of the canvas. Just dab, 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 swirl. Some baby blue sometimes, some white blue sometimes. Until I get Covered. If I'm painting faster than you, you can pause me. If I'm painting slower than you, you can fast forward me while I do this. So I'm just going to finish this up here a little more. So sometimes into my baby blue, sometimes into my white. And if you're going to do the edges, you can do the edges too. I'm going to cover this all up. Got all the various parts of the canvas covered up. If you want big fluffy clouds in your sky, you can do that too. It's really up to you. This is almost covered now. Just put paint on here. I like there being some texture in the sky like that. I just think it's fun. Instead of just being a solid blue. More paint on my brush. areas that you think are too obvious, whatever, you can dab over top of them, blow them in while it's still wet, get a little more bland, or you can make it really blotchy, just depending on what kind of look you like. Okay, that's almost done there. So there's the sky for Busy Little Beaver. Like I say, you can do some fluffy clouds if you want, you could just leave just a blue sky, and that is really up to you. So I'm washing my paintbrush now. Next thing I'm going to do is going to add the snow for the Busy Little Beaver. Now I could do the sky and the snow after, but then I have to paint around all the stuff that I painted on, like the beaver and the tree and that. So I do it first because the colors I'm using are light, so it's easy to paint over top of them. If I was doing a black sky, I probably wouldn't do the whole sky first because then it would be very hard to paint the beaver on top of the black, but it's such a light color sky, I'm okay to do it this way and just kind of speeds things up for, for me a little bit. Okay. So for the snow, I don't want the snow to lick the sky. I want it to stand a bit different. So I add a little tiny bit of red to my light blue to make it purple. I mean, just a little tiny bit. So I'm going to put some red on my palette. A little bit of red. I'm taking just a tiny bit of red. Now you can see it's a tiny bit of red. I'm mixing it with my baby blue. 
we got a purple. A little more blue. More white to lighten up a little bit. So now I have this light purple hint, so it's a different color than the blue. You see it's a different color a little bit. And that makes the snow so it doesn't look like just a solid ground. You can um, do it just with the sky and the ground with a row of trees if you want to do that too, and then divide the sky and the ground. But I've, he's kind of in a tundra in the field a little bit here. So for the snow, I'm going to do horizontal strokes. And sometimes I'm grabbing my, my blue. Sometimes I'm grabbing my white and I'm doing horizontal strokes. Maybe you want like a little snow hill. So you can add a little snow hill if you want, just right on top of your blue. Around the edge of the canvas. Yeah, and just horizontal strokes. I'm still using my large paintbrush just so I can fill this in faster. Add a little bit more red, a little more blue. And just fill up the full canvas at the bottom. Sometimes I might go in and grab white again just to get the different lights and darks just to make it more interesting. Get my snow hill. You don't have to have a snow hill, you can if you want. Just go around the bottom here. If you wanted to give it more detail, you, you can. You can use a smaller brush and take up more time getting all the lights and darks in the snow. Like if people have been playing it, it would be like valleys and, and that would have shadow. It would be more darks and lights in it. So I'm happy with my, my ground there. Get all the canvas covered. And there's my snow. I'm going to mix a little bit of darker purple, so adding a little more red and blue to get a darker purple. A little bit of white there to lighten that up just a little bit. If I want to have some, some more shadow areas, I can, I can add some vertical lines if I want to. Just maybe there's some sh shadow areas. If you want, you can do something like that. You don't have to. Okay. Little drips in the snow and that. Or you can leave it just the, the purple color that you have it. That's really up to you. So that's one thing you can do if you want. Okay, I'm going to wash my paintbrush now. So the first thing I'm going to do on the canvas is going to be the tree. So the tree, you can mix green if you want. So you mix your green, would be your blue and your yellow. Or you can use an already bought green. This is just um, dollar store green, I think is where that came from. Or you can buy green, this is brown, but you can buy green and Liquitec Basics, so whatever you've got, use two. So I'm gonna put a bit of the green on my palette. I'm also gonna mix some too, in case you wanna mix some. So there's the green right out of the jar. Now when you're mixing your green, it does depend on what kind of yellow and blue you have. You'll get different kinds of green. You might get more like a turquoise green if you're yellow and blue. Depending on what type of yellow and blue you're starting with. And that are more of a minty green. So if you don't like the green, you get mixing yellow and blue. <clears throat> um, you can use the green out of the bottle. So I have my yellow. I'm taking some blue. I'm adding a little bit of blue to start. I'm going to mix that up to get a green. There's the green. I'm going to add a little bit more blue because I'm a little bit darker. If it starts to look too blue, then that's as much as you can add for the blue. Or you're going to get like a blue green instead of just a, a green. And that's like a little bit dark green. I still have some little bit of yellow right there too. So I'm going to just get the extra paint off that paintbrush there. I'm going to move to using my round paintbrush. Let's get that dry. So there's the round paintbrush there. Let's get some water on it, take off the excess water. And for the Christmas tree, I've got my green that I've mixed. I'm going to start by the side of the canvas. I'm going to use like a little dabbing motion. And I'm going to start at the point of the tree. I'm going to do the first branch, just dab, 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 dab. So I'm not doing a straight line, I'm doing dabs, dabs, dabs to get the texture of all those little pine needles. But on the other side, I'm going to come down, make 
curves a little bit, dab, 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 dab. And I'm gonna work my way down to another row of, of pine leaves. And my tree is gonna come over the edge of the canvas, so you can do that too if you want. You can have it come right over the canvas and take them on the side if you want, or you can have it stop by the edge of the canvas. And I have a bit more blue, this one my green, so I'm a bit darker green still. So sometimes I'm grabbing my lighter green, sometimes I'm grabbing my darker green. And I'm gonna just keep tapping all the way down until I get the shape of the pine tree. So now I'm grabbing my lighter green there. Grab a bit more again. And I'm just dab, dab, dab. So I have them as tall as I want. So this is the center part of the tree. So I'm starting in the center and going to the right, going to the center, going to the left. I think in the camera you're looking at it might be opposite of what I, I see on my canvas here. You can make it a nice skinny tree, you can make it a really tall tree, that's really up to you. And do one more layer of, sometimes I grab my dark green, sometimes I grab my lighter green. One more. Coming out. There, that can be my pine tree. I'm gonna wash my paintbrush. Now to give the paint tree a little bit of depth, I'm gonna add a little bit of darker green underneath, where there'll be shadow underneath where I can see what would be kind of like pine leaves. So you can mix the darker green by adding a little bit of blue. If it's getting too blue and you can't go dark anymore, you can add a tiny, tiny bit of black to get it just a little bit darker, and just a tiny, tiny bit of black. Or if you have the green from the store and you want it a bit darker, you can add a tiny, tiny bit of black, not too much black at all, because black's really strong. It gets things dark very quickly. So I have like a little pepper size green on there. Mixing that in to get a darker green. And now I'm gonna go just light dabs, just underneath where the where the shadow would be in the center of the tree. Get some more paint on my paintbrush here. Just a few little dabs where there would be the shadows. Maybe there's some shadow in here, some shadow in here. Maybe there's shadow under this leaf here and here. Just to give your tree a little bit of depth. in there. Coming to the shadow underneath this, this, this leaf here. So I'm actually tapping on top of the green that I already have there, just from the darker color. And towards the, the center where the trunk is, because that's where the leaves are really thick, so there'd be more shadow. And there, just give the tree a little bit of depth. Maybe on the bottom branches here. There, just give the tree a little bit of depth there. Let that dry a little bit. And then for the tree trunk, if you have brown, if you have brown a thing, you can just use the brown right out of your bottle. Or you can mix your own brown. If you mix your own brown, it would be your, all your primary colors. Your blue, your yellow, and your red. A mix of brown you'd have to play with the the colors um, a little bit like if it's too red a little bit more of the the blue in that if it's too yellow you know just play around with the colors it's hard for me to say what you need of each because i don't know what kind of paint you're using and how strong each of the colors are if you can't get a brown you like you can use brown right out of the bottle I'm just paint more yellow on my canvas because i'm running out of yellow a little dab of yellow there So when you get a brown that you like, I'll put in that one. Just go right where the center of the tree is, right here, and then straight down is where your trunk would go. Just a line down through the trunk. The trunk has to go past where the snow is because it won't be sitting in the sky. And then if you want to give it some
the roots now you can come out to the side to mow the roots you have to be careful how far down you go with your trunk <clears throat> because the beaver's standing at the same level as the, the trunk is if you do your trunk way down here and your beaver's standing up here it's going like your beaver's standing way behind a tree and you know like he's farther away because the further things are up on the counter that's the farther away they appear to be so keep in mind you don't want to do your tree trunk way way down to here unless you do your beaver closer to the bottom as well on that. So there's a little bit of the tree trunk. Just straighten that out a little bit. There, so there's the tree trunk. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. If you want, you can add some of the, maybe you'll see some of the, the, uh, the trunk in between the leaves in these areas here. You can add some brown there if you can see some of those areas because you see the tree trunk in between if you want. Or if you have the paint on really nice and thick, you may not see that there. And then we've got some trees in the background, or it could be just one tree, a little tundra. So for the trees in the background, because in the distance you don't see the colors as bright, I'm adding a bit of white to the green that I have, just to make it so it doesn't stand out quite as much. And I'm adding a tiny, tiny bit of the brown, just to dull a little bit. You don't want a bright, bright green back there. So I'm just getting my green just a little bit duller, add a little bit more white. I'm using my small brush. I just want to give the idea that there's some trees in the background here. So same motion, just dabbies in that. I can do a little, little dab, 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 and, and small dabs because that's all raised, you don't see much. Just give the idea that there's some, some trees back there. Maybe there's, maybe there's a little bush next to it. Maybe there's a taller tree. Maybe there's a tree over here. When you do your trees, have to come down and cross where you do your horizon, where the ground and the sky meet, or they'll be floating in the sky. So just a little bit of green right in the background there. Now I have a mountain here, so maybe these trees are behind the mountain, so you wouldn't see them here. I can go all the way over if I want. Maybe there's a tree back here. Just a little bit of <coughs> in the distance there. Let that dry a little bit there. And then we're going to go on to our beaver. The beaver, you can use your brown and white if you have brown. I can mix some more brown. Um, I can, you can make them black and white if you want. You can mix a bit of black and brown and white. You can make like a brownie black. For this guy, I'm going to use just gray. I'm going to use my beaver gray. So I'm going to use some black and white. So there's some more black in my palette. Add some more white on my palette. I'm kind of running out. A little bit white on my palette. I'm going to clean my brush. Take off the excess water and onto my paper towel. So I'm going to mix a lighter gray. So I'm going to add some black to my white. So if you add white to the black, you have you end up and having to add a lot. So if you add your black to the white, you don't have to add as much. So a tiny bit of black to my white until I get a light gray. I'm still using my round brush because I can draw with that. <clears throat> I'm going to draw my outline for my beaver and kind of plan where he's going to be. So remember, your tree is down here, so you want your 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 beaver's feet to be at the same level. If you put him way back here, he looks like he's far away. If you put him way down here, he's going to look like he's in front of the tree. And I want my beaver to be kind of the same level on the ground as the tree is. So I'm going to start with my beaver. I'm going to start with a egg shape pretty much. So I'm just going to draw the egg shape. So it's going to be a little fatter at the bottom than the top. So there's his egg shape. And there we go. So that's the basic shape of them. I'm going to fill that in with my light gray. You can switch to a bigger paintbrush here if you want to fill them in. That's up to you. I'm working on 11 by 14 canvas. If you're working on a beaver canvas, you might have a bigger space that you're filling in. So I'm just grabbing my gray. I've got him filled in there. And because I've got white mixed in with my gray, white is a um, very opaque color, which means it covers the other colors nicely. So it covered up those trees underneath nicely. <clears throat> Some colors are very transparent, don't cover as nice. So depending on what color you're using, if it's not covering nicely, you might have to do a second layer on that. 
So I'm going to plan out where his tail is going to go. So I'm going to mix a little bit of my light gray here. So that's his bottom. His tail kind of goes from the bottom of his body, it comes out. So it comes out. And it's going to come out. And it's going to curve because he's throwing. So that's one side of his tail. And then the other side of his chest, I'm starting just above where his tail was. I'm going to follow that curve. It's going to get thicker up here. So it's going to be close to where the tail started here. I get thicker, so it goes up here, and it's going to curve around. So I'm going to come around here, close to where the tail started, so it's not very thick there. And I come around here, so it's going to get thicker, and then it's going to curve to make, make his tail. So there's the beaver's tail. <coughs> now for his tail, the outside of his tail is the same color as his body. So on, on the outside line, I'm going to make this line thicker. More paint on my paintbrush there. So the top part here, I'm making this line thicker. I probably see it on the picture that I have um, for the sample there. And that's going to be the outside of the beaver's tail, where it's the thicker gray. So I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. <coughs> And then to show where his legs and that go, I'm going to use my white, I'm going to wash my paintbrush a little bit. Take off the excess water onto my paper towel while your paints get watery quickly. Now I have just a very light gray, or you can go straight white if your light gray is very light. I'm going to go just white. I want to draw where his leg's going to go. So his leg's a little bit below halfway, and it comes out. Right on his body, you can draw it in white. Curves for his knee, curves in a little bit, and then it goes out for his foot. And his foot's at the same spot where his, his body is here. You don't want his foot way up here because he's not touching the ground, then he's just sitting on his bum with his arms and legs going in the in the air. So you want his foot to be touching around where his rest of his body is touching there. So that's gonna be his leg. So I'm gonna leave that white to show where the, the sun is touching the top of his foot, and you can see that his legs there. Now I have my gray that I'm painting. I'm just going to finish the back part of it. So it's like from where I stopped at the top here, it's just going to come down and then curve to his heel. So I paint straight down and then curve to where I put his foot. So his leg goes out, around, almost like a, a backwards number two, kind of. Okay, and then you can paint that in for his. And for his little paws, they're a little, um, I'm going to use a light color again. So either a lighter gray than the gray you have here, or if it's really light gray, you can use a white. And it's just a little above his knee, kind of. Just a little curve, a little paw for his little hand. Looks like one little hand. His other little hand's on the other side. So across from that hand, here it's just sticking up from his body. Oh, it's just a little bit. There's his other little. So he's got his two little hands sitting there. For his cheeks, again, I'm using the lighter color. I'm going above his paw, and you're making almost like a, a W, almost. I'm starting here, it's almost like a C, and it comes around, and then it goes up like a W, and then it goes down like a W, and it comes up. And his little jaw there, I'm going to do um, the underneath is dark so you can see it from there. So I'm going to a smaller brown paintbrush here. So that's my smaller brown paintbrush. Just because it's hard to see on the <coughs> canvas there what I've got because it's almost the same color here. So I've got my my black just to show you what it is. So I've got the, the C coming here and this is going underneath. It comes almost like a W. Curves up, and that's his little mouth there. And the other, with the lighter color, I have it curved around at the top here. Almost like when you draw a burst sometimes flying. I'm going to use black for his nose. So at where the center of what looks like a W is there, you put a just a little circle or whatever there for his nose. So you can have as big of a nose as you want or as small as you want. It's your beaver, so you can make him however you want. So I think he looks good with that side nose. 
And again, with the smaller round brush, I'm going to give him little claws. I'm putting a tiny, tiny bit of paint, black paint on my paintbrush, and with very little pressure. Or if you have a marker, you can use a marker. So with very little pressure, I can do a really tiny little, I mean, barely even, I think three little claws. There's one, two, three. So I'm not touching very hard on there, not at this paw. You can give three little claws too. If you have a fancy beaver, you can give him red claws if you want, because he, he painted them. I can give him little claws on his feet here. Just a little light pressure on my paintbrush so I don't get a thick, thick line. Or like I said, you can use a marker if you want. There. <clears throat> and then for the top of his little chubby cheeks, I'm going to go to the lighter gray, or you can go to white if your light gray is really light or something, or if you have brown, you can make a lighter brown. So the sun is going to catch the top part of his little thing. So you can almost see, almost like a circle here. So this would be the top part where his little cheeks are. And this one here too. Turn around the lighter colors just to show where the top of his little cheeks are. So there's his little, little cheeks there. Wash my paintbrush again. For inside his tail, I want a darker gray. So I'm adding a bit of black to the gray that I have here to get a darker gray. So it's kind of in the, in the shadow a little bit. And it's going to go on the inside of his tail. So you're going to cover over top of the line that you drew to tell you where the tail was on the far side. So I'm going to cover over that line. Just follow the same line going up. until the top of the point. And then you go from following the line to going next to the line, the thicker line that you drew right here. So I went covering the line, going on this side up here. I stopped at the top of my tail, and that's where my line's starting to get thicker here. And here where it's getting thicker, I'm following, I'm not going on the line, I'm following next to the line. So you still see all that gray. I'll put my paintbrush this way, you guys will see it better while I fill that in there. So I'm using the gray there. I'm using that thicker line. I grabbed my black by mistake. That's supposed to be the darker gray. We'll fix that up later. And I'm coming up. And I'm using that gray there just to show. Then you just fill this, this area in. Filled in for the little, the little beaver. Down to his face there. So there's his little tail. Now for his little teeth, I just use straight white. I can add a black line afterwards to divide his teeth into two. You can give your beaver as big teeth as you want, or you can brace his too if you want. That's really up to you. For his eyes, there's a little trick I use. I use the back end of my paintbrush, so not the one with the all the bristles and that, but the other end of my paintbrush. I put that, if you see in the other little picture there, I'm putting it in my black paint. Put on my palette just so I don't have too much on my paintbrush of that size dot. So on top of his nose, he's going to have one dot, two, there for his eyes. It's an easy way to make dots for eyes. Wipe off the black off the end of my paintbrush because if I forget, I end up getting it on my clothes all the time. Then for his ears, I want the darker gray. So his ear is kind of above his eye a little bit, over on the side of his head, above his leg. So I'm going to do a little backwards C for his ear there. And maybe he's got his ear showing up a little bit on this side. So you can see it's just the tip of his ear there. Then when you go over here, maybe just the tip of his other foot is coming out here. Just a little bit there. 
to let him dry a little bit there. And while he's drying, so we can have some more detail until when we're ready, um, we're going to go into the Christmas balls. So I'm using red. You can do whatever color of Christmas balls you want. So down here where he's got them all ready to throw them, put them on the tree, I'm just painting a whole bunch of circles. So I have them right here and I'm painting one circle, two circles, three circles, like this, four, first pile that he's using to decorate. Maybe one rolled away from the pile, so I'll do a little one here, maybe it rolled away from the pile. He's already got some on the tree maybe, so let's hang one right here on the tree. Maybe there's one over here on the tree. Let's put one right in here on the tree, it's right on top of the thing I paint. And the ball's already on the tree. Then I want to put the ball that he's already thrown in the air. So he's thrown, here's his tail, it would go here, it would go whoop, and maybe it's right here, let's say. The ball that he's throwing. I'm gonna let those dry a little bit, let me have some more detail on them. <clears throat> We're waiting for those to dry. We can go into some dark purple. So if you still have some dark purple left, you can use it. Or if not, mix it again, your blue, your red, and you'll still need some white. So you don't want it like a dark, dark purple. You want it just darker than the average ground here. So I'll mix a little bit more blue, a little bit more red. A little bit more red because it's too blue still. And I got a dark purple because there's going to be a shadow underneath his feet where he's standing. There'd be a shadow. So right underneath his feet, I'm going to do some vertical lines where his feet will put a shadow. His tail might leave a little bit of a shadow too. Maybe this little foot will have a shadow here. Christmas balls, they're on the ground, so they would be a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just going to go dark purple under the thin. This little Christmas ball here would be a shadow. And even the tree might have some speckled sun going through. Maybe there's a little bit of a shadow from these trees. The sun's coming down, and these branches here are making a shadow on the ground. So just a little bit of dabbing for there. Make them feel like that they're down on the ground. A paintbrush. Now with the the black, or you could do this with a marker if, if you want to. I'm using my small round paintbrush that I have, the smallest one I have. I'm putting a tiny little bit of black paint on it. I'm just gonna roll that to get it kind of to a point. And I want to add the throw line, so I need to put the movement lines on his tail because his tail is moving as it just threw that. So there's gonna be little little curves that follow, and you can use a marker for this too if you'd rather, that follow showing that his tail was moving a little bit on the side. I like when you see in cartoons to show that things are moving. I'm going to paint my paintbrush. I want to show that what he did is he moved his tail and it threw the ball, so I have to have a line that comes here for the ball, so, or the ornament there, for the, for the ornament from here, so it went woo, those little speed lines went through the air. Right from his tail. There, to give you the idea that's what's happened with it. I'm going back to my gray because these little ornaments, they need something to hang onto the tree with. So maybe there's the top to the ornament with the gray, the little top to the ornament, and then a little hook maybe. Same thing with these ones down here. Maybe this one, the top to the ornament hanging to the side here is the top little hook this one has a top here little hook maybe this one here has got a top here just to get the idea that these are ornaments you don't have to give each one a little top and hook you need a couple of them maybe the one inside here has a little top. just to give the idea that's what they are Maybe on this one you can see the hook looking at the tree. There's the top. Oh, I'm going to paint on my brush. There's the top. 
and there's the hook at the end of the tree. So you're just gonna have this. All right, so I'll get that all good little brush here. Now that I think my teeth are white or uh, dry enough, I have a little tiny black paint on my paintbrush. Go to my skinny round one, or you could use a marker if you're using a marker. I'm gonna put a little line between his teeth so he's got two teeth. I want my beaver to have two teeth. You want to keep him with one tooth? That's fine too. And then we have the birdie that's going to deliver the star for the top. So I'm going to paint the birdie first. So I'm going to use just blue. My blue is getting a little messed up with all my other colors there. So I'm going to put some fresh blue on my palette. There's some fresh blue on my palette. You can make your bird any color you want. So I'm still using my small brush. All right extra water off my brush. Time to put my bird. He's going to deliver there. So he's got here. I'd say right here. So I'll start off with a an oval shape, kind of like we do with the beaver. I'm going to fill that in. So there's my oval shape of my bird. And to get the bird's tail, blue on his paintbrush. Follow the oval shape around like we did. We're going to start at the bottom. My brush is touching the canvas. Now I'm going to come out and go one feather. Then on top of that one I'm going to go two feathers. Three. And that gives him his little tail there. So I did an oval first and I followed it along and I gave it a little tail as big of a tail as I want there. I'm going to fill that in a little bit more with the paint. And for his wing, going up, if you want your tail to be long, longer, you can make it a really big tail if you want. And that you can make it look, depending on whether it's, it's a chickadee or, I don't know, maybe it's a bigger bird. So for his wing, I'm going to put some white in with my blue and get a lighter blue. So I'm mixing a lighter blue right now. Some white. So there's a lighter blue. I'm just twirling my brush to get some of that gunky paint down to the bottom there. And for his wing that he's flying, I'm going to do three little lines. I'm going to start in the middle of the bird, middle of the over there. I'm going to go up one for a wing, and starting the same spot. Take a little line or two. And there's his little wing. So he's flying with his wing up in the air. So the same thing we did for the beaver, for his eye. I'm going to dip the wrong end of my paintbrush. Just make sure it's clean, not with black on it anymore. See, mine is all clean now. And now I'm dipping it into my white paint. I want my bird to have a big eye, so I'm not going to take off the excess paint like I did with the beaver's eye. And his eye is going to go above his wing. I'm going to put his eye right there. He's got a nice big eye. We'll let that dry, then we can give him a pupil after. Now for his beak, it's orange, so I'm mixing a little bit of yellow with some red to get an orange. Not a little more yellow. So it's underneath his eye a little bit. I'm going to do a little curve down. Curve up for his beak. That's how he's holding on to the star. Do you want to give him speed lines too, so he looks like he's moving fast? I got a little bit of black on my paintbrush. I'm going to just twirl it to get to the point. I give him little speed lines going, just a light touch. I'm not pushing hard on the paintbrush so I get skinnier lines. Hmm. Just show that the bird's flying. I'm going to paint his star. I want his star yellow. And sometimes yellow doesn't cover very well. Um, it's a very transparent color, but white's very opaque. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to my yellow. That's why I have there's a little white to my yellow. It just covers the other colors better just because white is opaque, but I still want it to be yellow. So I have now a light yellow. I'm just twirling my brush to get to the point. So 
So we can hold on to the star. I'm going to start with a straight line. So he's holding on to that point. So there's a straight line. Going into his beak. And then top of the star. Let's make this a bit bigger. I want it to be a big star. So in the middle of that line will be the top of the star up here. And we're going to make a triangle. Up to that point, which is in the middle of this line here. And this goes down towards him to his beak. So there's one part of the star. And then for the next part of the star, we're doing an upside down triangle. So the upside down triangle, it starts in the middle of between this line, the middle of this line, out a little bit. So we'll do a straight line for the base of that upside down triangle. And then it comes down, the point's going to be in the middle of this line here. It comes down to the point here, and from that point up to the other point here. And then you can fill it in, and you can touch it up if you don't like, if you want it a bit bigger or, or smaller somewhere. This is at this point here, and there's your star. If you want your star to be a really shiny star, you can add white lines to show the glaze. So I've got just pure white on my paintbrush, nothing else but white. So you can do a couple of just to kind of show that it's shiny. Now if I have a little beaver guy there, I want to add a little bit, tiny bit of white onto his eyes here. So you, the smallest brush you have, or you can use the end of a, a small paintbrush. This is a small paintbrush. You can go in white, like that, the tip of it into white, and dab that onto your palette a couple times to get, until you get a small dot. That's, I do that four times, small dot. Then you can use that to put a little dot right in his eye. Or you can do it this way. You can use the smallest paintbrush you have, a little bit of paint on it. I'm putting a little bit of white paint on it. And you can use that to add a little stop to his eye. I don't want too much paintbrush on my paint. Just a little stop to his eye. Yeah, it just gives him a little bit of character there. You can add a little tiny glare on his nose if you want. There's a little tiny white line with the glare on his nose because his nose is all shiny. And then he's just about done. But we can add a pupil to our fur for that eye still drawing. You can add some more um, details to things. You can add some snow onto your tree. So I'm going to use a little bit of the light purple that I have. I have white and some light purple there. So that's the color of our snow. Make some more white to lighten it up a little bit more. And this, for the snow wood of the tree, I'm just going to blow right on top of those. Maybe a bit of snow there on our tree. Maybe this leaf caught a little bit. Maybe there's a little bit in here on this part of the tree too. We'll just add a little bit of snow here. Maybe there's a little bit of snow that hit this part here. Maybe on this side. And you can add some snow on the tree where it might have hit. Maybe there's a branch here that caught some snow on the inside. This side too, can add some. There, now our tree has some snow on it. Okay, I think my guy's eyes are not so in there. I can give her a little black pupil, same way I did with this end of the paintbrush, or I can use my tiny paintbrush. I can use the tip of it that I have, and I'll make it to a point. Just adding a little bit of paint on there, so I don't want too much paint for his pupil. Now I'm going to add a little pupil right. Now I want the pupil to look like he's looking where he's going, so I'm going to put the pupil more to the front. Oh, it wasn't quite dry enough. Okay, it's still drying a little bit. You can see it a little bit there, the pupil. Um, now all you do to finish your painting is just add the details where you want them. So maybe this little guy, uh, we can pretend that the sun is hitting him on the top of the head, and I'm mixing a little bit of a 
navy blue between my light and my dark. So I'm adding a little bit of darker blue to my baby blue to get darker. And maybe the sun's coming up here, so this is going to be a little bit lighter because it's got some sun hitting it. So a few little strokes up there. And I'm going to add a little bit, tiny, tiny bit. Wash my brush. Take off the excess water. I'm going to take my blue right out of the, the jar there, the color blue I have. I'm going to have a tiniest bit of black to it, so a little pepper speck of black to it. Get a darker blue. When I've got my darker blue. Take just a little bit of paint to my paintbrush. Maybe it's underneath it because it's in the shadow here. So I'll put a little bit of dark blue here. Right on top of the blue. To show that his belly's in the shadow, give him a little bit of some shape. And then with his tail. Wash my paintbrush. And same thing for my little beaver. I can give him some more detail because maybe he's got some shadow here from his belly. So I'm going to go to my dark gray. I'm going to give him a few little strokes going up to show that, oh, he's got a little bit of shadow from his belly here. Then we've got just a little bit of paint. I'm stroking up from his belly to show. Got a little bit of shadow there. And maybe a little bit of shadow here where underneath where his little chubby cheeks curve. For his ear, you could put a little bit of light on top of his ear, and maybe the sun's catching a little bit of light on top of here. So where that gray circle I put is, I'm gonna put a little bit of light on top of that circle. Some excess water off my paintbrush. So I'm using, because I have such a light gray on my, my beaver, I'm using white. You can use light gray if you want. Here's the top of his, maybe the top of his tail here has got a little bit of sun catching this part of his tail here. So I have very little bit of paint to my brush, not much paint to my brush at all. Here, and you just go around and keep adding some details to your picture until you're happy with it. You can add some more, some shading into the um, star if you want. You can use a little bit of orange to your yellow to get a darker kind of yellow. So I'm just going to my orange here into my yellow. And maybe there's there's a little bit of uh, shadows in the star here, maybe in here. Just where the, the points go in. Now you're going to go to salt yellow. Not whatever you're in the mood for. Yeah, and that's about it. That's the uh, busy little beaver. Now in this one here, I put some texture in his um, beaver tail by doing like a grid almost in there. But I, if I do that here, I don't know if you can see it. I can try it and see if you can see it. But I'm using a very dark gray, almost a black. And then you can do lines going, following along in the darker gray. Going up and then going across. So we're going to add a little bit of texture to the inside of his tail there. There. And I think that's just about it for him. Well, I hope you enjoyed painting him. Thank you.